Hi everyone, I'm Rhonda. Welcome to Acres of Clay Kitchen, where today I'm going to show you one of the simplest ways to make grape jelly. And if you like these types of videos where I do a lot of home cooking and canning, preserving foods, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell and that will notify you every time I put up a new video. Also, I ask that you give this video a thumbs up. That will be greatly appreciated also. All right, let's get making some jelly. I'm gonna show you the easiest way there is to make grape jelly. And the only reason I'm making it this way is because Last year, during grape harvest, I have a small area where I have some grape vines, and um, they had so many grapes on them that uh, in the early season, and then once they started getting a little bit ripe, the birds came and ate most of them. I was able to salvage a few of them, but not enough to make jelly. And I also get grapes from a local vineyard, but last year for some reason I don't know if it was a late frost or what but they didn't have grapes so I, I didn't really get a grape harvest and now I'm out of grape jelly so it's time to replenish my pantry with some grape jelly to do so we're going to use grape juice that's already been prepared um, it's the simplest form you're only going to need three ingredients so the grape juice sugar um, in whatever form that you like to use, and um, pectin. I like to use Sure Gel. I've always had success with it, and I've never had really a big failure. Now the steps to this is very simple. Open up the box and take out the instructions. You're gonna find instructions that look like this on both sides. We're gonna do the cooked jelly recipe, and if you go down to grapes, it's going to show you how many grapes you need. Then you have to crush them and cook them and all that. But we're completely skipping this step and we're going right over here where it says you need five cups of prepared juice. And that is what I have right here. I have prepared juice here. Now this juice is 100% juice. There is no added sugar to this. You kind of want to make sure it's 100% juice. Make sure that it actually says it somewhere on the bottle. What I'm gonna do is measure five cups of prepared juice in my measuring cup, bowl. I'm gonna pour this right into um, a big saucepan. Now, we're gonna take this over to the stove and um, start heating it. I have the grape juice in my stock pot and it's on the burner. I have the heat on low at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the pectin. You also want to make sure that you measure out this sugar at this time because things are going to go quite quickly. So for grape jelly, it's going to take seven cups of sugar. Yes, seven cups. And that's if you're using the regular sure gel. If you have the other kind of sure gel that requires no sugar or less sugar, then you can probably get away with less sugar. But I always, I, but I never do that. I always add um, the full amount of sugar. Tastes so good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the pectin right in my grape juice right now before it starts to boil. Oh, by the way, I have all of my jars right in here. They are sterilizing. I've been boiling them in water for the last, oh, I don't know. I also have all my lids and seals in this saucepan right here, and those are getting warmed up as well. I'm going to be using Tatler lids today, so. Let's get this uh, pectin in here. Better turn a light on so you can see. Okay, so just sprinkle the pectin right in. And this is just one packet for the um, five cups. We're gonna bring this up to a hard boil, a boil that doesn't um, die down when you're stirring. So when that happens, I will bring you back. Also, if you see that um, some foam is forming on the top, you can skim that off. You can also add a little bit of butter to that, and that usually helps reduce the amount of foam that it creates. Um, if you don't skim it off, you're just going to have a little layer of foam on the top of your jars. 
Now that that is completely dissolved in there, I'm just going to let this set. I'll stir it period periodically. So a word about um, sterilizing your jars. You can do this in the dishwasher on your sanitized um, setting or you can just make sure that you wash them and clean them in hot water and then boil them for about 20 minutes. Now if you are going to process these in a water bath canner for over 10 minutes, you don't need to sterilize them. But the process of canning them in your water bath canner um, for over 10 minutes actually sterilizes the jar um, during that time. So that's just a little nugget. So I'm stirring this periodically, um, watching for it to boil. I do have this on high heat, so you do want to watch it carefully. Okay, so I think we're at what I would call a hard boil or a rolling boil, and it's a boil that when you stir it, the bubbles don't disappear. It keeps bubbling. And once it gets to this point, you want to add your sugar. Now you don't want to add your sugar when you add the pectin because if you do it all at the same time, you risk the chances of the, of the jelly not setting properly and it becoming a runny jelly. And that's not what you're going to want. So I'm going to go ahead and add all this sugar right in here. Stir it up. Ooh, makes it thick already. Okay, you want to stir it to dissolve it all. And we're going to bring this up to another boil. And once this gets to another boil, it's going to take a few minutes because we put all that cold sugar in it. But once it gets up to another boil, then we're going to set our timer for one minute, let it boil for a minute, and then it's finished. And then we ladle it into our hot jars. So these jars I'm about ready to take out and prepare them for this jelly. All right, while I let this come up to its second boil, I'm gonna go ahead and take my jars out of here. Always open your lids away from your face so that you never steam yourself, which is actually very painful. Give this a stir here a minute. I actually moved burners on you. I was here, but this is a bigger burner and it heats up a little quicker. This is one of my smallest burners, so it takes longer. All right, here's my jars. I'm gonna keep periodically stirring this because you don't want anything to stick on the bottom. I'm going to be canning in um, half pints today. And I have a I have just a few of these little jelly jars that I'll probably be using also. Depends on how much this makes. I think it makes eight cups. All the jars are out. I'm gonna keep the lid on here so that it stays hot. We're gonna stir this up again. Okay, we're at a boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer. Ah, I gotta turn that down a little bit. Set my timer for one minute. While, while it is um, boiling for the one minute, you want to stir it consistently. All right, we're at one minute. Let's shut my watch off and shut the heat off. And this is ready. And this is ready to get ladled into our jar. See how that foam just kind of disappeared? Okay, so I'm going to show you something here a second. I've moved my pan back over here. I have just this um, small bowl with ice water in it. I'm going to go ahead, and it has a spoon, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and dip this in here. And what I'm doing is actually seeing if it's going to gel once it's cold. And it's just a little trick that you can do to see if it's going to gel. Alright, wipe this off here. And if you don't see, if you can see, it's pretty thick already. And it's not completely cooled yet, but um, I have a pretty good feeling that this 
is going to thicken right up. See that? Plus I gotta taste it since it's on my spoon. Mmm. That's good stuff right there. Alright. Moving right along, we gotta keep things going. Ooh. Tastes good. <laughs> I could use another spoon, but I will wait. Okay. So now we're going to ladle it. This is where you're gonna wanna funnel. Funnel that's inside your jar like this and it makes it so the opening is bigger and you can ladle it in and keeps it a lot cleaner believe me we go we're gonna ladle it into our jars and this is all there is to it really each jar when I um, use the half pint each jar is gonna hold one cup and you can fill it up to about uh, fourth of an inch headspace, half inch, it's up to you really. It doesn't need as much headspace as um, say meat or something that you're pressure canning. Look at that rich purple color. So when I'm scraping the, the last little bit out of the bottom, you can see that it's already um, gelling up gonna make great jelly but it looks like I'm gonna fill all my jars except for one get every little little bit now this is very important because in order to get a proper seal you have to have the rims of each jar completely clean not sticky um, nothing okay so I just have a paper towel that I put some water on it and I'm gonna go around each one you also want to check for any cracks or nicks in the rim of your jars also. Because if they have a crack or a nick, don't use it because it won't properly seal. Okay, so I've gone around each one of these and now I'm going to take my lids here. I might need a... So I'm using the Taller lids which are a two piece. They have the ring and the lid. They're plastic and they're reusable try to get the water off of that and then set that down and go ahead and just lightly um, I just lightly um, put the ring on that then we're going to go ahead and place it in the water bath canner as I do this so I'm going to go ahead and do this with all of them putting the lids on except for one of them um, and it's going to be this one because this one's only halfway full and since it's only halfway full We're going to eat this one right up. Okay, so I'm not going to bother canning this. Right, I'm going to go ahead and Drop that back down in here Now we're going to turn this up on high Bring this up to a boil a rolling boil and then we're going to set our timer for five minutes it only has to process for five minutes. If it's a jam, it has to process for 10 minutes. But since we're not using um, any crushed berries, this is just juice, um, it only needs to process for five minutes. So once this gets to a rolling boil, I set my timer for five minutes. Once five minutes is up, shut the um, burner off, and, um, and then you can remove them. And I'll bring you back. The timer is up, so it's been five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and shut the burner off and get ready to take these out. I'm going to just place them on a towel here on my counter and you're going to want to use one of these. These are your lifesavers when it comes to canning. I know it looks weird but it's a can lifter and it just makes everything easier when you're trying to grab a hot jar out of your canner. Again, open it away from you because there's going to be a lot of steam. this up. Mine has a wire rack that just easily lifts and sets all the jars in and out at one time. Makes it easy. If yours doesn't have that, just make sure that you had something to elevate the jars because when you're canning, you can use any kind of pan. You just, you just want to make sure that the jars aren't flat on the bottom of 
your your stock pot because it rattles around and you have potential of um, breaking your jars because of all the boiling that's taken place. So. Now my jars, I need to take these out and tighten the uh, rings down because of the tailor lids. So I will do that between each one. I noticed that my um, wire basket is starting to rust because I see little flakes of rust on the lids of my jars. And I know it's getting old. Um, I actually bought it used, so I don't know how old it is. Alright, so now we're going to let these sit undisturbed on the counter for 24 hours. After 24 hours, I will take the lids off and check the seals, and anything that didn't seal will go right into the refrigerator. It's still good, but um, it should be eaten probably within three weeks. Once everything has sealed, then you can put it in your pantry, label it, put it away, and it will be good for a long time. Uh, the recipe says a year. Everything pretty much says a year when you're canning, but for me, um, I know that when I can a whole bunch of jelly or jam, it lasts well over a year. That way I don't have to do it every single year. And if you find that when you, um, when you look at your jar, after 24 hours, if you find that it's still runny when you go to like move it, like this one here, um, if you find that it's still runny when you go to put them in your pantry, don't worry about it. It's still good. You can use it as a syrup on pancakes or ice cream or anything like that. It's really, really good. Um, believe me, I actually have had that when I was experimenting with some other kind of jam. Hopefully you give this a try. It's super easy. Thank you for watching and join me again next time when I bring you some type of cooking video, whether it be um, what's for supper, what's for dessert, what am I canning, what am I dehydrating, what am I making out of milk, anything like that. We will catch you on the next video. Until then, go be a blessing. Take care. So, so I was cleaning up my dishes and stuff, and I see that my ladle has a little bit of jelly right in this little area. I don't know if you can see that. Where am I? Right here. And it will show you that it definitely has already firmed up, just like a jelly would. Just like a jelly would. Ooh. Ain't that a jelly? Just like, just like that. So anyways, it's a good part about making your own jelly. You get to sample it.